Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey, Dan Wood from Lockernome here, doing a quick video for Chris Perillo's YouTube channel, having a look at the latest and greatest version of Apple's operating system for the Mac, OS 10.7. Lion. Now, Lion was originally demoed at the WWDC last month and finally got a full release worldwide on the Apple App Store on the Mac today for the price of $29 US or £20.99 if you're in the UK. Pricing around the world does vary. And the only way that you can get hold of a copy of Lion is by downloading it from the Apple App Store. Now the first thing that you'll need to do before installing OS 10.7 is make sure that your Mac's compatible with it by going to the Apple menu and then about this Mac and making sure that you've got at least a Core 2 Duo processor. Now of course we did see the loss of PowerPC support back in Snow Leopard 10.6, however 10.7 goes a step further and now even drops Rosetta which means that PowerPC is completely dead and that there is no universal binary support anymore so before you pay for it do check that your Mac is compatible. For the first time ever, Apple have decided not to release the latest version of OS X immediately on any physical media, although apparently Apple will be releasing it on a USB stick for the price of $69, if you fancy paying $40 for a 4GB USB stick. Now to install OS 10.7 Lion, you will originally need a copy of Snow Leopard installed on your Mac, as obviously you can only get this from the Apple App Store, so uh, the only version of OS 10 so far that the App Store has been available on is 10.6. So you go to the App Store, download it from there, you will then download a 4GB file on my 13-inch 2008 aluminum MacBook. It took around 35 minutes to install, and uh, then we're greeted with the traditional OS 10 desktop. And upon first glance, it doesn't appear that a lot has changed from a UI perspective, although upon closer inspection, you can see that some things have changed, like looking at the Finder interface, the icons down the side have now lost their colour and all appear in the kind of iTunes grey. Also, the um, traffic light gadgets on the top left of Windows have become a little bit smaller, and I do think by looking at it that some of the gradients as well surrounding the Windows and the dog have also become a little bit more grey, which seems to be Apple's current trend. Now, of course, the main thing that's got everybody talking about OS 10.7 Lion is the fact that Apple appear to be moving their iOS mobile platform closer to their desktop OS 10 with a further integration of more touch gestures in OS 10.7 Lion. Going into the preferences on Lion reveals a lot of brand new features that are supported on Apple's multi-touch trackpads and also the Magic Mouse if you've got one of those at your disposal as well. And they're also kind of accompanied by these really cool, very useful animations that show you exactly how to use all the new features in Lion. Now, further evidence of Apple bringing OS X and iOS closer together is the introduction of a brand new feature in Lion called Launchpad, which has really been one of the key features of the new operating system. And if you've ever used an iPad or an iPhone before, this will look very familiar. It's basically a function that you can access from the dock or by using one of the multi-touch gestures. And then it shows you a list of all your current applications installed on your system in this kind of like iOS screens interface, which can be moved between the different screens of applications by using multi-touch gestures on the trackpad or by using two fingers on the magic mouse. And I think this is especially useful for beginners who've never used a computer before. It really does give you a complete overview of everything that's installed in your system and a really easy to use, very simple to look at interface. And of course, another big feature that's been hyped in OS 10.7 Lion is the fact that applications can now run in full screen mode. Now, previously in OS 10, the title bar and the dock area were pretty much sacred ground, but now Apple have finally succumbed to the fact that people want to have a little bit more space for their applications. So for apps that are developed with OS 10.7 in mind, you'll often find this handy little gadget in the top right corner of your app, which you can click, and then it will give you the full screen real estate that the application can take full advantage of. And then by using more gestures on the trackpad, you can actually scroll between the various full screen applications that you've got open at the moment really simply. Another much improved feature in Lion is the new interface to the Apple Mail program. Now it borrows very heavily from the Mail app on the iPad, as you can see by looking at this screen capture here. Really giving a simple overview of your emails, especially useful in full screen mode as well with this reading pane down the side, and also showing full conversation history as well. Yet more evidence that Apple are moving OS X and iOS closer together.
Upon installing Lion, there are some quite hefty updates to the iLife suite, including a 750 megabyte download to basically upgrade most of the iLife 11 suite to be compatible with the new UI features and also the multi-touch gestures that are incorporated into 10.7. One of the apps that really does take advantage of the upgrades in Lion is iPhoto, which allows you to use the trackpad in a very iPhone style way and manipulate your photos on screen. There's kind of a bit of this present back in Snow Leopard, but they've really gone to the next level with it now. We couldn't really do an overview of Lion without talking about mission control. Now this has been talked about quite a lot, in particular that demo back at the WWDC by Steve Jobs. It kind of takes expose to the next level by letting you click between the various full screen apps on your system with this really nice simple to use interface. It can be accessed either by clicking a shortcut on the dock or by using one of the many multi-touch gestures that are present in OS 10.7. Now, as usual, Apple have really gone to town on the hype surrounding their new operating system, claiming that it features up to 250 new features in OS 10.7. Of course, many of these are under the surface fixes and stuff that the average user wouldn't really notice in day-to-day -day use. However, it is really worth going beyond the surface of Lion and getting under the skin to find out some features that weren't present in previous versions that you might find useful. For example, when playing around with Safari, I found that using three fingers on the trackpad and uh, dragging right would actually do this really cool kind of scrolling between your previous page and the page that you're currently on. And there are many more features like this in Lion that really you'd only find by either going really in depth into the documentation or spending a good few days playing around with it yourself. So the big question, is upgrading to Lion worth it? Well, of course, the only place that you could do it from is if you currently use OS 10.6 Snow Leopard, as you'll need access to the App Store. Either that, or I've heard stories that apparently you can take your Mac into an Apple Store and they may do an upgrade from Leopard for you, or uh, probably a fresh install. But as it currently stands, you have two options, either download it now from the App Store if you're using Snow Leopard, or wait until next month when Apple are apparently gonna be releasing a USB stick containing a full fresh install. Now, there are some interesting new features and for the price of only $29 or £20.99 in the UK. I can say this is pretty much a no-think upgrade. I mean you'll think about the new features that you'll take advantage of probably every day and in the upcoming months new applications that will take advantage of the new systems that are present in Lion and not in the older versions and you know how quickly the Apple ecosystem moves on. If you're not with the latest and greatest OS then you do really get left behind. I may say maybe hold off it for a couple of weeks just to make sure that the bugs are ironed out, but I know from watching this channel that you're probably quite interested in technology and you're gonna go ahead and do it anyway. So my verdict is go ahead, download OS 10.7 Lion for your Mac today. This has been Dan Wood for Lock and Home. If you wanna follow me on Twitter, I'm available at danwood underscore UK. Thanks for watching.